Solar cells produce electricity from light. When the energy from the sun hits a solar panel, electrons are produced. This is called the photovoltaic effect. As you can see here, we can successfully use the photovoltaic effect to power motors and lights. But using solar panels to generate energy is expensive, so we use coal, oil, and natural gas as energy sources. The key part of a solar cell are its semiconductor layers. Semiconductors are materials which can either generate or accept electrons. If the electron flow is channeled through the semiconductor to electrodes, an electric current can flow. These small silicon solar cells produce less than 0.1 watts of electrical power. Humans worldwide consume around 16 trillion watts of power. This includes energy for electricity, heating, and transportation. That's the same amount of energy as 400 billion 40 watt light bulbs constantly burning. 16 terawatts is a lot of energy, but it's really very little compared to what the sun releases. We receive very little of the sun's total output, but it's still a lot. The incoming solar energy to the earth is much, much more energy than we use. But surprisingly, solar energy generates very little of our energy, even among alternative energy sources. It is expensive to manufacture solar panels. These are silicon solar cells. It requires a lot of energy and is very expensive to melt and form the silicon needed to make silicon solar cells. Polymer solar cells are a new type of solar cell. Here, UC Santa Barbara scientist Alan Heeger displays his Nobel Prize winning flexible polymer or plastic solar cell. Polymer solar cells generate electricity just like silicon solar cells, but with less costly preparation. The important semiconductor layer of the cell starts as a liquid mixture. This mixture is then simply coated on glass or plastic with no costly melting or crystallization like with silicon solar cells. When a photon of light reaches the semiconductor layer of a polymer solar cell, it has enough energy to make an electron move through the semiconductor layer. Moving electrons generate electricity. Researchers at UC Santa Barbara are investigating the properties of polymer solar cells. Material scientist Bright Walker has made a solution of two organic semiconductors which will be the active layer for a polymer solar cell. This work is done in an airtight chamber as water vapor and oxygen can damage the polymer solution. He then places a thin film of the semiconductor solution on glass. This is done on a spin coater. The spinning makes the liquid evenly coat the surface of the glass. It is now a thin film of molecules which can donate and accept electrons. Bright could also do this on flexible plastic. After this, he must deposit layers which can carry the electrical current. These layers look like silver and are called the electrodes. These are the finished polymer solar cells. Bright has made many cells, each one with different mixtures of semiconductor organic molecules. By testing the solar cells, he hopes to find the best one. This one generates around 1.2 milliamps of current. The major advantage of polymer solar cells is that they are inexpensive and easy to make. The semiconductor solution is just like ink. It can actually be just printed onto surfaces using printers just like inkjet printers. Polymer solar cells can also be flexible and lightweight. Polymer solar cells are still not in widespread use due to a sunlight conversion rate lower than silicon solar cells. 
They also degrade over time, but material scientists are working to overcome these problems. Along with other alternative energies, we can use solar energy to decrease our dependence on coal, oil, and gas. The average citizen of the United States uses an amount of energy roughly equal to 260 40-watt light bulbs burning constantly. This amount includes electricity, but also includes heating and transportation for ourselves and all of the things we consume. If you put on a sweater inside your house and turn down the thermostat by 5 degrees Fahrenheit, this will reduce your energy consumption by 10 light bulbs. If you carpool, ride your bike, skateboard, or take the bus for a 30 mile trip instead of driving, you could save 30 light bulbs worth of energy. If you buy local products instead of products that travel from far away, you could also save a lot of energy. If you eat vegetarian meals, even if it's not all the time, you save a lot of energy as raising animals for food consumes a lot of energy. These are just some of the many ways you can save energy.